and let's start to uh, check if someone has one. And by and for doing that, we have to create an array winning combinations with the winning combinations. So here are we here this array is going to contain all of the winning combination that exist. So uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to see which combinations are a win. So here, 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 and then cross. And I'm going to note all of them in an array. So the first one is 0, 1, 2. Then let's see, 2. And it is 3, 4, 5. And 6, 7, 8 and zero. I have already written this down, that's why I know the winning combinations, but you can also read them off of the board. Let's see, six, one, four, seven, two, five, eight, zero, four, eight, and the last one is two, four, six. So here we have all our winning combination. And if we now take three, four, five, for example, then this represents a winning combination, three, four, five. And as you can see, I, I um, assume that this is place number zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This will make it easier in the future, as you will see when we get to it. But right now, these are all the possible winning combinations. So now every time our user clicks on a button, we're going to see if they or one of the players have won. So in order to do that, we're going to loop through all these possible combinations. So for combination in winning combinations. And then within this for loop, I'm going to write out an if statement. So I'm going to say if state game state combination zero is not equal to zero and game state combination dot zero is equal to game state combination one and let's see one is equal to two. Now, what I would suggest that you do is click pause on this video and see if you can comprehend this because this can be pretty complex logic. But if you don't, then just continue on. Um, but if you really want to grasp this, try to pause this video right now and take a look at the statements and check what it means so that you can... Um, understand what we're doing here. And now what we're going to need is we're going to be able, we have to be able to set the whole game on pause. And in order to do that, we're going to create a variable that says is and I game is active. And this one is going to be initially true because the game is active. But if someone has one, then we're going to say game is active is equal to false in order to just stop the whole game. Um, game is active, no problems there. Let's remove the semicolon. And then we're going to check who has won. So we're going to say if state state uh, game state dot combination. And we're just going to take one arbitrary one. I'm going to take this one. is equal to one, which as you remember was cross. Then cross has one else that means that not has one and um, what we're going to do is we're just going to print this to the logs so that we can see that everything is working as it should so let's see and here we're going to print cross let's try to run our app and see if we got the result that we're looking for so let's play a game let's do like this 
and we're going to get cross to win here and nothing yet and when we now click here we should have cross as one which we do have cross so everything is now working as it should we now have a fully functional cross uh, um, game but as you can see there's one problem I can keep laying bricks and I have no way of restarting the game so that is what we are going to take care of right now and what I'm going to do here first of all is I've, I'm going to check here if game is active is equal to true because if it is I'm going to keep uh, enable the user to laying their pieces but if it's false and someone has won or it has been a draw which we haven't implemented yet but we will then we're going to disable the user to place any further bricks so now we have a game where we can win and uh, everything is working pretty much as we wanted to but now we want to enable our user to restart the game and we also want to give some kind of feedback of who has won so let's work on doing that right now and we're going to have one button that's going to say play again um, let's see play again which is going to enable our user to yeah well play again so let's place it here it's a child's game so I'm going to make it a bit funky here white colors and uh, the background is going to be orange and I'm going to make this bold like or heavy and increase the font size a bit to 25 and then I'm going to have a label that is going to display who has won so let's drag in that label make it a bit wider and I'm going to just um, do, 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 give it also some text oh don't want to zoom out I'm going to make the color white and I'm going to make is it white yep and I'm going to make the background blue a light blue and here also I'm going to center the text I'm going to increase the font size to 25 and make it bold see heavy there we go here is our label and we are going to see if just write in a placeholder cross has one let's see if it fits pretty much and here we go here we have our new elements which is going to be our play again button and our user feedback button so let's import those so I'm going to first up connect this play again button define it as an action so play again it's going to be an action connect it up and I'm also going to import it as an outlet so that we can hide it and show it when we need it to play again button connect it and let's see ba, ba, ba. and I'm also going to import this label which I'm just going to do at the top here right there call it label just like that and we're going to jump over to our view controller just like this and then we're going to get uh, enable our user to restart the game and we do that by re making the button appear when someone has won so we're going to say play again button dot is hidden is equal to false and we're also going to make the label appear is hidden is equal to false and while we're here we can also change the text of the label so we're going to say label dot text is equal to cross has one and here we're going to set the label to label dot text is equal to not has one just like that and I'm uh, going to delete this to make the code a bit cleaner and we're going to make them appear when someone has won now when the user clicks on the play again button what we're going to do is we're going to reset the game state so no bricks have been laid no crosses or knots have been laid we're going to say let's see what was the variable name game state game state is equal to that so pretty much resetting it and we're also going to say game is active is equal to true 
And what we are going to do is we're going to set the active player to be equal to 1, uh, which means cross, which is in our case the default. And we're going to hide the button again, so play again button dot is hidden is equal to true. And we're going to hide the label dot is hidden is equal to true. Now what we are going to do is we are going to reset all of the buttons. And in order to do that, we continue on our road in this play again func function. And what we do is we go through all of the elements that have the tags from one to nine, which we, if you remember, gave our buttons. So we say for i in one, two, nine. And we are going to create a button which is going to be equal to view dot view with tag that is equal to i as a UI button. And then we're going to say button dot set image. And we're going to remove the image so it's equal to nil for the normal control state. So now we have pretty much resetted everything. And what we're going to do before we run it is we're just going to hide them initially so that they don't appear when we launch the app. app. So is hidden and is hidden. So let's try to run the app and see what we've got so far. So let's play a game and now we're going to get cross to win again. Let's see if I can, if I can make this happen. Well, this is just chaos here and cross has won play again and we can play again and have lots of fun testing this app. Cross is one, let's make not win and bam and there we go, not has won. So everything is working as it should but there's one more thing I want to correct before I call this fully functional and that is, let's see if I can make this happen. Uh, no. Uh, that is if we have a draw, which I'm currently not able to manage. Let's see, I have to, I have to be able to make, create a draw here, else, let's see, come on. Uh, I just placed that, there we, there we go. Here we have a draw, and as you can see, now the user can't interact with the app anymore. And we have to change that, we have to do so that we check if there has been a draw. And we do that when the user clicks on one of the buttons. So we do it under the for loop. So after we have checked if someone has won. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for e y in game state, game state. And um, we're going to check if there's a zero left, which means there is a place left where someone can put either a cross or a not. So we're going to say four, and we're going to say if i is equal to zero, which means we have found a zero, then we're going to set, what we're going to do here, let's see before, um, we're going to set the game is active to be equal to false, and if we find an empty spot then we're going to say game is active is equal to true so we're going to reactivate it and we're going to we're going to simply break the loop because we found an empty spot now if this didn't uh, fire which means uh, this didn't come true which means there's no active spot then the game is still active is still false and we're going to check for that if game is active is equal to false then we are again going to display the label so label dot text is equal to um, it was a draw and we are going to make them appear label dot is hidden is equal to true and play Again, button dot is hidden is equal to, sorry about that, false. And this also has to be false. And now, as you will see, we can now play again, even though we have a draw.
So here's our game. Let's try to lay some crosses and knots. Let's try to make it a draw. There we go. There we go. Come on, you can do this. And there we go. We have a draw. It says it was a draw and we can play again. And if someone wins, crosses one, play again. So this, my friend, is the fully functional knots and crosses or tic-tac-toe app. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and if you want to have some more explanation around this app just click my explanation video where I will explain how all of this works. So thank you for watching. Make sure that you click the subscribe button and if you do so I will definitely see you back in the next video and once again thank you for watching.